Hi, welcome to The Libertarian Alternative. My name is Mark Selzer, and my co-host today is Martina Slocum. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. So you're a legal secretary? I am for a criminal defense firm. Wow. Well, thank you very much for coming out and helping out on the show today. Of course. Our topic today is the Nolan chart. This is a uh, political chart that is rapidly replacing the old left and right uh, single line chart. And to talk about that today, we'll, we have the inventor of this new chart called the Nolan chart. His name is David Nolan, and he's also one of the founding members of the Libertarian Party. Thanks for coming out today, Dave. Thanks for inviting me, Mark. So let's go into a little bit on the background of, of who you are and uh, how this, this, uh, when how you this first, came to be. Yeah, how this came to be. Well, first off, I should say it isn't really a new chart anymore. I wrote the article in which I first proposed this as a better way of looking at the, the world of politics, a better map, so to speak, uh, 34 years ago. So it's not really so new. <laughs> but in that 34 years, it has, has grown to the point, as you said, where uh, many, many political analysts, not only in the United States, but around the world, now recognize that there are better ways to analyze political systems and the people who, who are players within those systems than a simple left or right. I got my start, I was a political science major at MIT, mm -hmm. believe it or not. I was one of the first people ever to graduate with a political science degree at MIT. And so I was trained uh, way back then to look at political systems and try to analyze them in the way that uh, an engineer or a scientist would, rather than simply accepting the labels that were prevalent at the time. Uh -huh. And I reached the conclusion after some analysis a few years after I left MIT, I reached the conclusion that you could best represent the the uh, map of politics with a two-dimensional grid uh, with civil liberties on one axis or freedom in, in personal affairs on the one axis and economic freedom on the other. And that gives you a square or a diamond depending on how you orient it, uh, which gives you a much better map of the world because you can see that people who might be considered quote conservatives aren't all the same. People who might be called liberals aren't all the same. And there are an awful lot of people who are neither liberal nor conservative. And now you can understand how they fit into the political system and how they differ from liberals and conservatives and how they can relate to one another and play effectively within the political arena. So you noticed early on that perhaps your political philosophy didn't fit onto this traditional left and right wing single line. You just simply draw a line and then you put the left on one side, the right on the other, and then you try to figure out where people fit. Correct. Uh, that's really a very simplistic or primitive way of looking at, at the world of politics. You know, it's interesting, the phrases left and right stem back to the days of the, of the French Assembly, the French uh, Parliament, in the late 1700s, where literally the people who were on the conservative or monarchist side sat on one, one side of the aisle, and the people who were the revolutionaries sat on the other, and depending on which side of the aisle you sat on, you were considered to be the left or right wing. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I really don't think it much sen makes much sense to try to analyze 21st century politics in uh, using a model developed to describe the seating arrangement in the French Parliament 220 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> That's very true, these have become very useless because we've seen very little difference at all between the uh, Republicans and the Democrats now. We see a little bit of difference in the rhetoric, but barely any at all in what they do. Both parties grow government, and although the right wing or the so-called conservatives talk about reducing taxes and cost of government and size of government, they seem to be growing it more than the supposed left wing or liberals. Well, that's very true. Back when, when I was young, the very first candidate I ever worked for in a presidential election was Barry Goldwater. And I think it would be almost anybody could see there were significant differences in the political philosophy and political agenda of Barry Goldwater and Lyndon, Lyndon Johnson. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, except for the rhetoric, there really is not a dime's worth of difference, to quote George Wallace, or, or, or a nickel's worth, or maybe even a penny's worth anymore, between George W. Bush and John Kerry. George W. Bush is the big government president. He's grown government more in three years than Bill Clinton did in eight years. He's, he's put in more restrictions on civil liberties, or more accurately, his appointed Attorney General, John Ashcroft, mm -hmm. has done more to diminish our civil liberties than any other Attorney General, at least since Mitchell Palmer in the 1920s. And of course, he's dragged us into another no-win foreign war, just as Lyndon Johnson did in the 60s. Uh, 
George W. Bush is much more a clone of LBJ or the political heir of LBJ mm -hmm. than he is of Barry Gowler. So now we just have different shades of, of big government mm -hmm. politics. On that note, where would you put the, the candidates of this presidential election on your chart? Where would, <laughs> where you would place I put them? them? I'd put them in the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> but but with, if that were not an option, it's interesting. It's a good question, Martina. When you look at the actual positions that candidates take and cut through the rhetoric, mm -hmm. you discover that 90% of American politicians of the two major parties are very, very timid politically. They try to huddle together in uh -huh. the center or what they perceive as the center because they think that's where the votes are. I would say they all fall between 50 to 60% on both civil liberties and economic liberty. So there's not really very much difference among them. Kerry is portrayed as a, quote, liberal. Bush is portrayed as a, quote, conservative. And except for some, some high-profile, grandstanding kind of moves that, that Bush has made, for example, his, his recent declaration that he supports a constitutional amendment against yeah. gay marriage, which is really playing to the peanut gallery. There's no chance that's ever going to happen. But he knows that it plays well to his socially conservative constituency. Rhetorically, there's a lot of difference. Substan substantively, there's very little difference among them. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, there are the occasional politicians uh, like Republican Ron Paul of Texas, who is an aberration. He's, he's a true uh, defender of liberty. He, for all practical purposes, is a libertarian. In fact, he ran for president as a libertarian back in 1988. But with rare exceptions, such as Ron Paul, and I can't think of any others right offhand, mm -hmm. there's the very, very just little likes difference. To, to spend money. They, they vie with each other to spend money. Mm -hmm. The only real difference, and this is a cliche, it's kind of a joke, but the difference between Republicans and Democrats is that one party believes in robbing Peter to pay Paul, and the other believes the exact opposite. <laughs> I, I think what before we go too much into where we're going to put people, I think we need to take a look at the Nolan chart. Good idea. And people I think are going, what is this chart, any? <laughs> we, have, we have a role in here with, uh, firstly, I do a search on a search engine that shall go unnamed. And what we do here is we're looking, we see 40,000 hits here for the Nolan chart. And we're going to go to a, the first website that comes up called the Nolan chart uh, variations. And where I, I guess it's a, a website that has a lot of links to a lot of other explanations of the Nolan chart. How many people now online a day take this Nolan chart quiz? You know, I don't, don't know what it is per day, but the most popular site for people looking to learn more about the Nolan chart and take a little 10-point quiz that mm -hmm. enables them to determine where they would fall on the chart is a, a website run by the Advocates for Self-Government, which is www.self-gov.org. And, and they're a 501c3 nonprofit educational they're organization. An educational and what you see here is a series of questions that you kind of answer on economic freedoms and then over here and then on personal freedoms. Right. And what that does is it gives you an idea of where you sit on this chart, which we will see a uh, representation of coming up here very shortly. We're going back to this, uh, this website again and we're looking at the uh, some websites that feature the Nolan chart, which is a new way to look, a new way, a 30-year-old way. <laughs> well, relative to the 220-year-old way, it's new. <laughs> and this has been, here we see one of the different versions of the Nolan chart. Now, this is not something you copyrighted. I, if, I, if I had a nickel for every person who had, has <laughs> taken the quiz, you started to ask, would the Advocates for Self-Government have a quiz posted online? Anyone who's watching the show that's interested can go online and, and take it. Over two million people have taken it to date as of February 2004, and the number's going up by, I don't know, five or 10,000 a day. 